He's known as the beast for his aggressive and fearless play. Tonight's masterclass is by none other than Grandmaster Adiban. Welcome. Yeah, hi. Nice to be here. All right, Adiban, now before we start, we have to address the elephant in the room. What happened today? Ah, today, okay. I thought you were looking for an elephant. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. What happened today in your game? No, I chose a complicated line and I was not expecting some night D sun and then uh, I was trying to recollect my prep and I could not and then I went for this very interesting uh, Bishop of Sun sacrifice and I'm getting like three pawns for a piece. Actually, I think uh, at some point, yeah, I have to, I have to take uh, uh, the knight on d4 at some point and then uh, I get like three pawns for a piece and a very interesting battle but for some reason I played fast and uh, and it was not a good idea and then the situation just got worse and worse, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of your qualities is that despite having a bad day yeah. in office, you're often seen with a very positive attitude and you've always got that smile on your face. Yeah, that's true. What's the secret? <laughs> I don't know. I remember having like, a, this is just one game. I remember having like a very bad day where I lost many games in World Rapid and stuff. World Rapid and Blitz and then uh, Vidit wanted to take a picture where I was trying to be sad. But I could not. Just I could not bring myself to be sad. No, it's just uh, overall positive uh, attitude and just uh, I know this is just one game and uh, I know it's not going to stop me. So I just don't feel uh, sad about it. And also I feel like after every loss I come back even stronger. So yeah. Yeah, you're good. known for your comebacks. Yeah. Right now, um, what do you have in store for us today? Yeah, this is one of uh, my favorite games. Uh, I played with Sergei Tevyakov, it was a long time back and uh, it always had a special memory because he was one of the strongest players I had bet at that time. Okay, still is because I think at the time of this game his rating was 2698. Uh, and uh, also Sergei, I think uh, has, he has been holding the record of uh, unbeaten streaks actually. So he has been uh, having that for quite some time, which okay, recently was bet by uh, Ding Liren of course with his 100, but yeah, so. Yeah, that's why it's an, I thought it's an interesting game which I wanted to share with the audience. Well, we can't wait. Hope it has all your aggressive and tactical style in it. But before that, give us a little background about the game. Was it an important round? What were your thoughts going into it? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah it was in the Orissa Open in India. and uh, No, actually the tournament was pretty much normal because I was more or less playing, uh, I think, lower rated opponents. And uh, this was my first... Uh, game with the Grandmaster and uh, and funnily like after I won this game everyone was asking me like if I made a Grandmaster norm. So you were not a Grandmaster already? No, no, no. Okay. So I was like 2493 or something. So so I thought okay everyone was asking me if I made a Grandmaster norm after this game. But I said uh, like the minimum criteria is to meet like three Grandmasters and even I won't be able to fulfill even that. <laughs> because the last round was one more Grandmaster and totally it's two that's it. But still, uh, it was a very nice game and yeah, I was, I think I was preparing till 3 in the morning, so uh, it was like a crazy night. <laughs> Is that normal for you to prepare for? No, no, no. no because just, you don't uh, come across as... Yeah, because this was probably, I think, the strongest player I had faced at that time, so I was really taking it very seriously. Yeah, yeah also you were playing to become a grandmaster around that period, so you were very motivated. Yeah, yeah, to, uh, sure. Yeah, Should we dive into it? Yeah, Should we right. start? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. You wanted to talk about this? We victory? will be talking about... <laughs> this later, yeah. <laughs> about what? Uh, to, this is my victories. Yeah, we will. We'll <laughs> come back to... So, Adiban's very excited to talk about his many wins, which we will be very soon. But first, let's okay. start with the game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Let's go right into it. I'm black on... Um, Again, Sergei Tevyakov. Yeah. So all this is well known. Okay. So the Roy Lopez. Yes. Okay. Now I think we can start off. I it. have to ask you, Adivan, that we see a lot of uh, players actually going in for the Italian instead of the Spanish instead of Bishop B5. We see Bishop C4 happening more and more now. Yes. What do you think is the reason for this trend? No, I think one of the main reasons is this Berlin. <laughs> to avoid the Berlin. Yeah, yeah to avoid the Berlin. And uh, Italian was, uh, no, uh, Berlin was well-researched. 
and uh, in the top level after a while uh, everyone knows this line so well that uh, they are they are needed to find like a new system where they can analyze and try to explore new grounds and italian was the perfect uh, ground for it because scotch was having this drawish tendencies and italian the thing is you can it's you can aim for a fighting game right yeah, yeah. and I, uh, previously i used to use italian in my younger days when i wanted like a fight away from theoretical battles but nowadays everyone is playing that e that even that has become theoretical so <laughs> nowadays there's no such thing so we might see after bishop b5 bishop c4 we might see a bishop d3 development yeah, yeah. Some, hopefully not but sorry bishop you go bishop d3 instead of ah, yeah yeah <laughs> something like that yeah. i hope not though yeah. all right so this was a royal appears and it continued with c3 here yeah okay so i just wanted to know like uh, who knows the name of the line Steinitz, yeah, it's, uh, the first official world champion. Uh, so I just uh, like to play the, uh, I mean, openings of the world champion. So I chose this, and uh, let's who's see. Your, uh, who's your favorite world champion? Because I don't know too many. Okay, I think the first book I read was uh, of uh, my, uh, like Michael Tall, uh, My Life and Games, or uh, t actually it was Attack with Michael Tall. And uh, another game, another book was my memorable 60 games by Bobby Fischer. So, like, I always have preference. Uh, Tal and Fischer. Tal and Fischer, yeah. So. And if there was one thing that you had to say you learned from them, from studying their games? Yeah, Tal is his fearlessness. <laughs> like, you just go for the kill, right, from move one. So, <laughs> that and uh, Fischer was from like... From move one. Yeah, move one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Fischer was this... Uh, professional yeah he would be like the pro because tall was playing for just enjoyment and he just wanted to have fun but fisher he wanted to win the game he wanted okay he wanted not so much as enjoying but he just wanted to beat his opponent so these two things i really liked from these uh, champions here so combining these two would yeah, be that would be the ultimate yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right uh, so c3 yeah short castle is uh, one of the main lines and uh, i think it's uh, more popular uh, nowadays and C3 is uh, it allows like a very forcing line uh, with F5. So to avoid this, many players uh, they try to go short castle. So F5 yeah already it starts yeah like I said. So here you have okay there's one line with uh, uh, D4 but uh, it goes in some piece sack so it's uh, so E F5 is more or less the main line. Anyone in the audience who plays this line? No. Probably not. <laughs> well, maybe after this game. <laughs> <laughs> they hopefully they will get inspired. <laughs> so yeah, bishop f5, and uh, yes. Now there's there are a couple of lines like there's one crazy line with d4, e4, and d5, and uh, it's actually a piece sacrifice if I remember correctly. Uh, like uh, white even doesn't take on c6 and just goes for a, but it's like super complex and. Uh, yeah, generally white goes for uh, like safety first, yeah. And now, yeah, bishop d3, just stopping d4 and uh, I'm controlling everything. So bishop d3 prevents your, or prevents white's development yeah, yeah, yeah. on yes. the queen side. On the queen side, yeah. So rook e1, yeah, pretty much forced. Yeah, now like, okay, I played bishop e7, but I'm, uh, I want to ask why not knight f6. All right, this is for the audience, one yes. for the audience that what happens after knight f6? Like there's a difference between this and bishop e7, so it would be. So. Huh? Did you take on e5? Uh, take on e5, yeah, I think. Let's have that on the board. Yeah, uh, so we have a suggestion of take on e5 directly, but probably takes yeah, back. Yeah, takes second. back, uh, so rook e5, but bishop e7. No, the problem is, uh, like, uh, the pieces are not ready, yeah, for getting co compensation. And also, I just need one more, one more short castle. Yeah, also one, one of the reasons I wanted to show this game is uh, when I was taught chess, I learned these three golden principles of chess, uh, which I'm curious if you guys know. While they think, why don't you tell us? Huh? Tell us while they're having a think. Uh, what are the three <laughs> principles? Three principles. Does anyone have a guess? Or they're still thinking. They're still thinking. No, but tell us a bit, uh, while we have our audience yeah. giving this position a thought, how much of this, this obviously was part of your preparation, right? Till now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So do we have anyone or with any ideas in this position? Yes, that's the one. Oh, good one. 
<laughs> that's Whoever the <laughs> that's the uh, difference between Bishop E7. So, so you uh, the pin. Yeah, the pin. Yeah, so it's like a super like double pin. Yeah, so Bishop A4 and Rook E1. So this is the reason why um, Black goes Bishop E7 first to prevent this idea. So after Knight D4, it's very unpleasant. I mean, I don't remember the exact evaluation, but I think uh, yeah, it was not pleasant for Black. If I remember. Right. Ah, yeah, because Queen D7. We've got Queen F3 yeah, as well. Yeah, Queen F3 idea is there, yeah. Maybe we have that on the board for yeah, a moment. Yeah, so Queen D7, yeah. And the pin and continues, And there's yeah. attack on D3 and attack on C6, so yeah, it gets... Yeah. So E4, the problem is Queen to D3, yeah. So this pin is still a problem, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so Knight F6, uh, that's why I'm Bishop E7. Yeah, I remember once, uh, it was in 2016, I think, uh, they were, it was in Hasselbeck and Open in Sweden, and... Uh, the game was, they were not starting the first round and uh, uh, so we didn't know, uh, or, uh, okay, we were a group of youngsters and uh, we had a lot of time. So we started analyzing this portion out of nowhere and Shiro came across our analysis and uh, he suggested Queen B3 and he said this was his preparation from some time back. <laughs> and did you use that in this game then? Huh? Or this was after this game happened? No, this was in la like uh, three years back or something, okay. 2016, yeah. So just, no, I was just uh, curious, like it goes something like this and Queen D5 and it's like... Uh, a mess. Yeah, a mess, yeah. No, I also this is a very typical Shiro position yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I also I played uh, one, of one game with Nils actually in the same system. Oh, is, yeah, still playing this game, yeah. So, rook e3, yeah, the point is, okay, he wants to kick uh, the bishop and... Uh, so, white basically wants to get d4. Yes. As soon as he yeah. can. Yeah, and the main line is uh, bishop c2, actually. Uh, this is the easier way, yeah. So, uh, to take, take, knight f6 and d4. And uh, this is the main line and... Uh, yeah, it's probably around slightly better for white uh, or equal, yeah, so this is what I was more or less expect. Yeah, but Rook E3 actually had played some games, so I was kind of uh, uh, prepared for this. And did um, did Sergei take some time for this move? Do you no, he played quite he fast. He played it fast. Yeah, okay. if I remember correctly, yeah. So and I was happy to get this E4. Yeah, so now, now why not Knight D4? When you say you were happy to get E4, tell us a bit. Oh no, basically like uh, the, my preparation continues, yeah. So okay, nice. so you were still in your book. Yeah. And we've got uh, Adiban's trainer. <laughs> yeah, you wanted to see. Mr. Ubilava <laughs> joining us. You <laughs> <He> wanted to see. <laughs> he's just making sure he's done a good job with uh, you. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought after the, my game today, you will not join. <laughs> <laughs> you ever. <laughs> yeah, not join. This, uh, Maybe it's just the wine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. So the, the principles, uh, the three principles of chess, which I learned was uh, capturing the center and uh, peace development, which is what uh, my opponent didn't follow and I didn't follow today. So do <laughs> always uh, develop your pieces. It's never a good idea not to do it. And uh, yeah, the third one is what was it? Castling, yeah, king safety. Okay, so knight e1. Okay, so he's still uh, planning to get rid of this bishop at any cost. Uh, yeah, so now any suggestions how I continue? This is a very interesting position because black is not fully developed here. But neither is white on the crease Yeah, but side. yeah, I think somewhat black is a little bit better developed maybe, I guess. Then. The white, yeah. Some of this, all this uh, queen side pieces make a very weird impression. Yeah. So we have a suggestion, sorry? B5. B5 followed by knight E5. B5 followed by knight E5. Yeah, I think that was one of the moves I was considering. Let's have it on the board. Yeah. So we have a suggestion with b5 here. Yeah, but I think probably I can play bishop b3. Knight e5 was the idea. Yeah, and I think I can go here if it works. <laughs> yeah, but okay, it's still knight c4. I'm not at all sure what is happening. Uh, maybe I think probably to take here, but then still ed3. Yeah, it's yeah, 
Yeah, b5 is an interesting suggestion. Yeah, but uh, for it some reason it was... Bishop c2? Yeah, maybe just bishop c2, yeah. Takes and... Uh, Knight c2. Or queen c2. Maybe. Maybe you want to go queen h5 or something. <laughs> Knight c2, you have to still Knight defend. Six, Knight f6. Yeah. Yeah, well, somehow I'm not happy. Maybe d4. Yeah, d4, but at least takes and short castle. It's yeah, it's uh, still game. So b5 yeah. is a reasonable yeah, suggestion. Yeah, b5 is uh, reasonable, yeah. And b5, b5, check, 9, d3, queen, h5, check. Yeah, this is what I was about to suggest. g6. g6, queen, queen d5. d5. Yeah. yeah, queen d7, I guess. Bishop d1. Oh, this is a... B oh. No, this is beautiful. Maybe bishop d3, yeah. And yeah, it's... Yeah, not enough. Because bishop d1, knight f6 is still possible, but now it looks... No, no, it's still possible, but uh, you can at just take a pawn and uh, bishop e6 is threatened. Yeah, it's, it's not a good position. Yeah, b5, you know, I think the main problem is uh, it weakens the light squares. Uh, so, right. I was trying to find something more in the spirit of the position. To play in the spirit of the position. Um, should I take a guess? Am I allowed? Yeah, but you can see. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I, I actually you hadn't. You can see the game. It's true, but to be honest, I hadn't seen it until you mentioned it. But that was going to be my move. <laughs> yeah, okay, so you so are crazy, so I, I assumed you would come up with that. So, so do we have another suggestion? Yes, Very interesting. Again, yes. That is correct. Yes. So that's. Yeah, basically, we are not uh, going to allow them time to uh, take this piece. Yeah. So now I remember it was some line with rook h3 and knight f6. Like, basically, like I'm going to give up this d3 pawn and go for a short castle and try to go for some attack on uh, initiative. But yeah, he played knight into d3. So this I was uh, actually expecting. Yeah, because he had already played uh, rook e3, so I was like, uh, like I said, I was preparing for quite a long time. <laughs> so once again, what did you have in mind if you just moved the rook? A knight of six, right? Just simply knight of six. Yeah, so rook h3, I think just knight of six, and I continue. And white's yeah. develop lack of development is yeah, yeah, very obvious in the situation. Yeah. And uh, if he just takes on d3, d3 at yeah, the I moment? Just take. So rook d3. Yeah, I think just... Uh, Did you just want to go short castle or what? No, I'm just trying to remember. I think maybe it was something like b5 maybe. b5, uh, someone suggested this. Yeah, so bishop b3 and now knight here maybe. But again, it's super messy. <laughs> <laughs> and it was long back, so I don't really remember but what But knight e5, this looks good, no? I uh, no, but I'm just not sure if bishop to g8, what is happening. <laughs> right. G8, queen h5 check. And takes on h7. Yeah, it's... Yeah, but still, uh, the problem is why does uh, the queen side pieces are not playing, so it will take some time to come. Did he uh, think for a while before he moved, or did he go for this exchange sacrifice really yeah, quickly? Yeah, no, qu quite quickly, yeah. I think uh, maybe uh, I could have thought here, yeah, but somehow he wanted to play fast, yeah. So, yeah, now, okay, it's pretty much first what I did. Now, knight b4. Yeah, now the second question. Okay, now the second. So now, how to continue? And remember, this is Adiban playing with black, so that's a big hint. <laughs> and the first yes, suggestion that comes is Bishop yeah. F2, yeah, just and it's obviously the right yeah, one. Yeah. Just uh, play like me, yes, that's the secret. <laughs> okay, basically, like, uh, we don't have time to go back because knight in the c6 is threatened, and uh, time is of the essence, so just we go for the attack. Um, yeah, now how to continue? Actually, in some ways, while you have a think, I mean, let's just see this position here. Yes. You would have had to see bishop f2 before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was simply uh, because it's probably the only move yeah, in yeah, the yeah, position, yeah. right? Yeah, I will tell you when my preparation actually entered. So, so we are still in your yeah, preparation. Yeah. So bishop f2 here. And yeah, yeah, yeah. white has to take. All right, how do you follow this up? Yes. Who said bishop of two? I did. So you have to continue. <laughs> 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 
Sorry, we have a suggestion. So I was talking. Knight h6. Just now, right? I think then you can just probably take on c6, no? If knight h6. Also, you have to be careful about queen h5 check yeah, because you will not have g6 yeah. anymore. Yeah, this queen h6. So this can be unpleasant. Yeah. Because now the h6 knight hangs. Yeah, it's like more or less the same idea, but I just changed the order of the moves. So, so queen h4 check first. So now, yeah, he has to go king uh, g1. And uh, yeah, now, yeah, knight h6. This is a uh, little yeah. bit better than uh, knight f6 for some reason. Now I'm trying to remember why. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, just uh, e7 is under control, yeah, and uh, you keep the f file open. So knight h6 is uh, slightly better place than knight f6. So this is what I did. And yeah, he took knight c6. So. Uh, so the big difference with in including queen h4 check is that the h5 yeah, square is under, is under control. So under your control. idea was correct. Yes, as always. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, Ooh. exactly, yeah. Nice. <laughs> so now they are thinking like me, so it's easy. <laughs> so the audience just suggested castle. I have to ask how, where did that, where is that coming from? Just to get the rook into the game. Also because it feels like the only move. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, we don't, we didn't really have an option. Yeah. Because you can't really take on c6 because white after taking is yeah, just yeah, completely yeah, winning yeah. in this position, right? So now black has a really big threat of checkmate. Yeah, checkmate. So yes. you're threatening queen f2 and queen f1 yeah. next. Yeah. Okay, maybe this time for a change, uh, maybe for white they should try to find the difference. <laughs> Well, you know what you have to play against. And you were still in your prep. Yes, yes. <laughs> what do you, how do you feel now? You know, there's been a lot of talk and controversy around opening preparation. The fans at least don't like it a lot because they feel that chess has become a lot about openings. As a strong grandmaster, yeah. um, it's not avoid. You can't really avoid opening preparation. How do you think it's healthy for chess? Yeah, okay. Because now, for example, today I think I lost uh, mainly because of opening. So it has now become a major part of our uh, like uh, like a career, and so we need to be always ready. And yeah, I think the main problem with uh, why fans uh, don't like it is the. I mean, the increase in draws, like so there are just so many draws because if you play correctly, it's always ending in a draw. So, and the computers are not at all helping for this because always, if you switch on the evaluation, it's very always like 0.00. .00. So, that's why, like, uh, yeah, people are calling like classical chess is dying. So, that's why you should uh, maybe focus more on rapid and blitz. But I think still there are like a uh, lot of. Uh, Areas which are not explored and uh, like there are quite even I think Dingler and he continues to come up with uh, some interesting ideas Yeah, so I think uh, it's just you have to strike a balance. Yeah, because it's part of uh, opening is going always going to be a major part of uh, The game so we can't really avoid it. <laughs> and how do you feel about this whole uh, argument around classical chess becoming more and more difficult because of this um, results that we often get, especially in the top elite events. I mean, uh, the World Championship got decided in the tie breaks. Yeah. We had no result in the classical format. Hikaru won the entire Grand Chess Tour without winning a single game in any of the classical events. <laughs> yeah. um, do you see that? Do you see? Do you think rapid and blitz is the future of chess? No. Okay. I, in in a way, it feels uh, it's a little bit sad that the World Championship is decided by rapid when. Okay, because we have a separate World Rapid Championship. So if you win that, you are the Rapid World Champion. So, but not when you go through the classical cycle. But yeah, just uh, uh, people are not ready to take so much risks in a game because of uh, they just okay want to be safe, and I think that is the main reason. Uh, I still like classical chess more, but uh, at the same time, I'm also uh, for me always uh, Rapid and Blitz was for fun. But nowadays, I see that. Uh, the World Cup and a lot of like even the World Championship is decided by rapid, so it's becoming more and more important. Uh, so I think yeah, it's instead of uh, 
I think you should be ready in all formats. Yeah, that's uh, I think the key. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, we had an interview with Hikaru um, recently where he said that a world champion should be strong in all formats, in all three formats, which yeah. is why he thought that Magnus would be the favorite to win because it's very important to have a world champion who's good at blitz, rapid. And yeah, but okay, no, this was a little bit silly in my opinion because okay, like okay, he went through all the difficulties of candidates and stuff. So, okay, if Caruana won the match, I think he fully deserved to be the world champion. But uh, even he could not, I think, uh, he, I think he himself did not play up to his uh, like usual uh, self. Like he was playing more defensive. Like I think he was happy to go to uh, the tie break, but where he actually did not have so much of a chance. So he should have actually, uh, like someone was telling me that you should have started the match as minus one. Then maybe you would have taken it more seriously. Because like going to Rapid was a big handicap for him because uh, Carlson was clearly superior to him. So yeah, I think no, I think uh, it doesn't matter that the current world champion has to be the best. Right. But uh, there have been uh, instances in the past where like I think Fisher was world champion in Blitz and also like uh, also uh, Michael Tall uh, was like uh, uh, he was also very good in blitz, so in fast formats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Cab, I think all these world champions. So I think yeah. in a way it makes sense, but still you cannot uh, discount Fabi for yeah. just because he's not good in uh, rapid. Yeah, that's all. Right, but uh, talking about draws with your style of play, that's obviously not a problem for you because we often see. Uh, yeah, I always find a way to <laughs> make it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Okay, so coming back to these positions, any suggestions? You had quite a lot of time to think. <laughs> ah, yes, Queen E2. Interesting. Yeah, I think I wanted to just continue with uh, Knight G4. Checkmate. Yeah. Ah, but okay, maybe H3. So H3. Yeah. So yeah, I think it was something like this, if I remember. And. Uh, the idea is to play queen g3 or uh, to take on h3. Uh, so if he goes knight e7 check here, do you just move your Yeah, queen this here? is the point, to just ignore it actually. And the threat is knight on h3 or queen g3, so it's really quite nasty. Yeah, this was actually, I think, uh, what he should have played actually, if I remember. Queen e2 was correct. Uh, but I think uh, what he did was wrong actually. He played H3, he also prevented the back rank with a different move. Or I think uh, one more way was uh, an ID7 check, uh, just to distract the queen. I actually, during the game, I think I would have taken it. But later on, I found that uh, King H8 was actually even stronger, the same uh, idea, like just ignoring and going for the attack. Yeah, basically, I think, uh, no, the line is like, uh, in old, I can now tell you, in old annotations, it shows as uh, uh, clearly winning for black. But okay, the computer doesn't exactly agree. Uh, but probably the, uh, the the computer at that time was only climbing it as slightly better for black. So that is the uh, assessment of the position. So event H3. Yeah, so now I think it's uh, interesting for black how I continued. So another question for our audience, how to continue the momentum of the attack? I mean, let's just, if you actually take stock of situation, you've got, yeah. he's got three pieces for a rook at Yeah, the <laughs> three pieces, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe the clue is okay. I think this is the reason why queen e2 was maybe a little bit better than h3. And that's interesting. Yes. After this, uh, knight f5. So queen f2. Yeah, uh, king h2, I guess, and uh, knight f5. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, can I do queen g4 maybe? But still, you can go knight h4 and thread a knight of three check. But then maybe knight d. I'm just still thinking if I should distract knight e7 and. Lady. Let's just have queen g4 on the board. Yeah. So if knight h4 with the idea of knight f3 and queen g1, can white go knight d4 here? And rook f4? 
Yeah, this doesn't... Dangerous, no? Yeah, it looks very dangerous. Maybe even rook f4 here. Uh, or even c5 maybe, because just get rid of this knight and... Yeah. Uh, I mean, white's biggest disadvantage is that none of his pieces on the queen side are... Yeah. This is what you're playing against. Yeah, maybe so queen uh, f2, maybe I should go king h1. Yeah, but then you have at least queen f1 and take this guy. So yeah, uh, the count will be a little bit less. <laughs> Telling three pieces, yeah, now it will become two. <laughs> yeah, so king h2, yeah, knight of, yeah, this is a good suggestion, actually. I didn't uh, see this. So, your yeah. threat is knight h4. Knight h4, yeah. So, can white just go knight d4 right now? You'll anyways go knight h4, and can I go? Oh, yes, this looks good. Knight h4 now, and then queen e2. <coughs> no, queen e2, knight, knight f3. Knight f3, uh, so, yeah. You have to go queen. Let's yeah, just have that on the board. Let's just show our audience oh why yeah. queen e2 doesn't work. Knight f3, this is nice. So if you take knight f3, your queen hangs. Otherwise, it's queen g1 mate. Yes. So um, instead, can white defend with queen g1? Queen g1. Then queen f4, right? Yeah, but this is probably the way, yeah. Uh, queen uh, queen, queen f4, four, king h Or king h1, yeah. Ah, or g3, maybe g3. Yeah, g3, yeah, g3, yeah. Ah, so you, you are on fire, yes. Queen g1. <laughs> nice defense. Yeah, so this is uh, maybe... C5, C5. Yeah, I think... T okay, probably it should not work, but uh, I was thinking something oh like this. Oh, this is nice. To run the king. I mean, white does have a lot of pieces. Yeah, but I'm worried that uh, it will be checkmate. <laughs> Just take the knight and okay, I think it should be. Yeah, but okay, it's not mate it's yet. Not over. Yeah, it's not mate yet. So maybe bishop d sound, bishop g4 or something. Ah, I don't even want to take this. Yeah, okay, so, so I have to give everything. No, why I can't think. you go knight e6 here? Yeah, I think he wanted rook f6. Then d4? Yeah. Ah, okay, we want to do this. Okay. I wanted to go with uh, rook f5 uh, yeah? and g6. Yeah, but I think same d4. So yeah, bishop g5. No, okay, I just want to give as much pieces as possible just and stop the <laughs> checkmate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, d3, uh, yeah, okay, knight e6, rook of 6, and then d4. Yeah, this looks like a possibility. Yeah, somehow it's not uh, okay. And maybe it's even stronger to include bishop b3 check so that my knight on e6 is defended. Yeah, but anyway, he can't take. He can't uh, really yeah, take, so that's bishop right. Bishop b3, so. Ah, yeah, so maybe it is uh, better to, uh, yeah, rook of 8, maybe, yeah, bishop b3 check, and then knight e6, yeah. And then you get your d4. Yeah. Yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah, knight a3, like... Uh, I'm just <laughs> trying to save everything. <laughs> yeah, too many pieces. Four pieces <laughs> Four for pieces. a rook <laughs> might just be too much. <laughs> <laughs> if there's no mate, yeah, it's not enough. <laughs> yeah, so this was an yeah, interesting line. Uh, Queen so f2, king h2, knight h5. Good suggestion, knight f5. Yeah, so... Any other suggestions in this position? H3. Queen f2 and then rook f3. All right, let's try that. So we have queen f2, king h2 and rook f3. Yeah, uh, what is the idea exactly? Because you're not really threatening rook h3, right? Knight d4, let's say I come back. Yeah, and white will Yeah, I think some of are just uh, defending badly. I think black has uh, got a massive material problem going on. So no, okay, but uh, he has no risk, I think. He can always make a draw a with betrayal, knight yes. g4, like takes and queen check, and he can, so. Repeat. Repeat anytime he wants. So he was, he's now having any problem. Yeah, so queen of two, yeah, is a good suggestion, but. Uh, I'm looking for something more forcing and more awesome. <laughs> more awesome. <laughs> no pressure. Just more awesome. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, nice one, Ashley. So the clue was good, yeah. <laughs>
So yeah, just uh, as they say, bring all your pieces to the attack. So, and yeah, I'm stopping all this queen e2 and all this stuff, and I'm threatening uh, queen g3. So your immediate threat is queen g3. Yeah, queen g3. And there's no way to defend the mate. Yeah. He actually found a very interesting way to defend against it. No, I mean, in this position, yeah, if yeah, yeah, yeah. is on the board, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's over. It's over, yeah. All right, let's try and come up with a defense. So, you have to think of something against the idea of queen g3. Uh, king h8. So let's have that on yeah. the board. So we have a suggestion of so knight e7. Yeah, knight e king h8 on no weapons. Okay. Let's anyway have it on the board. Yeah, but it's the yeah, king. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, anyway, this is what happened in this the game. This is correct. Yes, this is good. So but the big question is now what? It's the theme of overloading the queen, yeah. So knight e7 I can't take, so king h8, yeah. So now... Just have that on the board, you have to... Just have that on the board. It's so knight yeah. e seven is important ah. because queen e seven, your ah, yeah, yeah. rook is yeah yeah you cannot um, take yeah rook so. is attacked. Yeah, but anyway, I was in this game. I don't think I was ever planning to take back. So <laughs> <laughs> you really didn't care about yeah. the pieces in this game. I was just going for the yes, the majesty, yeah, king. So still a very big threat of queen g three on the board. Yeah, again, I have to emphasize, yeah, this all the, his main problem is all the pieces are sleeping, so they're not really playing, yeah. I think that's the main reason why the attack is quite strong. Queen E1 on King E3? Queen E1. Yes, so you yourself have to find the reputation uh, <laughs> for Queen E1. Yeah. Nice one. <laughs> So queen e1, let's have that on the board. Yeah, queen e1 so unfortunately doesn't work. Yeah, this was my point actually. So Just yeah, so king g g2 and uh, and you lose the queen. Yeah, actually materially, oh, it is not doing so bad. But the problem is again the king. Like okay, if you try to play knight a3 and I bring the last piece and okay after rook f2, it's it will be checkmate soon. So right. Yeah, so queen, so queen e1, queen e1, doesn't e1 yeah, doesn't work. When? Uh, now, now, yeah. Ah, yes, bishop c2. So the coach has the student stumped. <laughs> yeah, I <should. laughs> Yeah, maybe bishop c Yeah, no, but probably, yeah. Bishop c2, I didn't think, actually. Yeah, maybe it was possible, yeah. Bishop c2. So. I guess I should continue bringing all the pieces. Rook f8? Yeah. yeah. And rook into g2 is a threat, yeah? Ah, yes, Rune G2, yeah. It's a yeah, big threat. It's really sharp today. Huh? Very sharp today. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> All this training with Lawrence, yeah, uh, helped, I think. <laughs> Doing commentary. <laughs> yeah, it looks really bad, huh? Yeah, so just, uh, there's no difference, I think, for Rook G2. All right, so any uh, other... Uh, uh, knight f5? Knight f5? Uh, uh huh. That's an interesting idea. Ah, yes. This is once again stunned. <laughs> yeah, but I think I'll play rook f5. Yeah. And okay, guys, what is the threat? King is in, uh, king is in H8. So you're asking if it's black to play here? Yeah, what are you threatening? Yeah, what I would do. Alright, so imagine yeah, black to play. Yeah, I just um, it's uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's quite interesting. Yeah. But I'm not sure if it <laughs> works. Yeah, I think it's all yeah, it's good. Really <laughs> 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 yeah. No no, I was hoping it would end in main, but it's not because King has shot that so I mean you're whispering, but you do realize the online audience can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> So rook f1 is a suggestion. Is that a threat yes, here? Yes, that was the one. Yes. Well done. And uh, yeah. So no, I was hoping it would be a. So mate. for example, just for uh, yeah, let's see okay, a3. a3. You yeah. don't make such yeah. moves on the board ever, but just to demonstrate. Yeah. So rook f1 takes and knight g3, and uh, yeah, king. Either way, it's uh, checkmate. So this is the one. 
So yeah, Ruka Fade and yeah, if we take uh, Night Edge 4 and the uh, X-Ray. Rook G2, Rook yeah. F1. So it's just... Uh, and actually even with all these pieces on the board, there's just no way to play against mm. uh, Rook G2, Rook F1. Yeah, next. there's no defense. <laughs> Epic, yeah. Yeah, so there's I think probably only one more left uh, to <laughs> defend actually. So we have to defend the G2 pawn. Yes. Okay, maybe I can show. Yeah, it's. Uh, All right. So tell us what you did. What your uh, Sergey did here? Yeah. So it was uh, knight d5, and uh, so it's just uh, uh, ready to play knight e3. So yeah, with the queen g3 or rook f8, both uh, you can just go knight e3. And I think the e3 square is very important because it defends f1 as well as g2. Mm, yeah, sure. Thanks. So I just continued. Rook f8. So he just continued being a million pieces down. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, so it's pretty much forced to do this. Okay, now I think, uh, okay, the main reason why I showed, wanted to show this game was this moment, yeah, which I found very interesting. And uh, this moment, were you at least out of your book now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure, no. I think uh, when he played h3, yeah, it all was right. not in my preparation. So all this rook of 2 I had to find over the board, yeah. So it's three pieces for the rook currently. Yeah. But this is a very interesting motif that we often see, which um, is to sacrifice material when all your opponent's pieces are on one side and then go for the kill on the other side. Yeah. Over here, he's, you're just attacking uh, White's king. Even though you're materially down, it doesn't matter because all his pieces are on the other side of the board. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, there was one of my uh, trainers. Yeah, he told me th to split the board and uh, then I can count how many pieces I have for attack. And okay, so like you can just see that there's like I have queen, two rooks and knight and uh, there's basically knight and king and queen. Yeah, so it's... Heavily uh, underpowered, yeah. That's an interesting uh, thought process. So you split the board into two, let's say along the E file. Yeah, yeah. And even though on the queen side you've got nothing, it really doesn't matter. Matter, because yeah, because uh, the game will end in the king side, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Any suggestions? Rook G2. Uh, again, stunned. <laughs> Knight G2, what is happening? Uh, king. Ah, so okay, rook g2 and uh, king h2, rook f3, yeah, you wanted. Now, oh, well, I think I have queen e1. Somehow I'm escaping. Sir, so can we just have that on the board? Ah, yes, rook f3. So, rook f3 and queen e1 defense. Yeah, actually, the problem is even after rook f3, I don't think it's like a big threat, so I just stop it. Right. Rook, uh, yeah, it's not working, yeah. Okay, let's go back to yes, the position. Yes, 9d3. Oh, yes, that's the one, yes. So, yeah, uh, it's like... Well uh, done. Removing the main defender, so... Like, once this 9d3 goes, okay, queen g3 will be very strong. And actually, I have, like, another thread, actually. Okay, so he uh, can't take on f3 with the pawn because... Can we just have that on the board? Yeah, the so I just... So you can't take because it's mate, king yes, h1, yeah. and... You can decide rook h2 yeah. or queen h2. Ah, okay, yeah. Both um, right. And let's go back to rook f3. Yeah. And now, yeah, the point is, uh, with the same idea, I'm threatening rook h3. So he oh, cannot... Nice. Yeah, he cannot take because of the same queen g3 and queen h2. And again, just to demonstrate a move like a3, rook h3, and rook h1 is not... is unstoppable. Yeah, uns yeah, uns Otherwise, unstoppable, you run yeah. into yeah. Uh, queen g3 mate yeah. if you take on h3. So now black has to, uh, white has to find a way against the uh, idea of rook h3. Rook h3, yeah. Oh. Bishop g7. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop <laughs> g7. So finally one of the pieces is coming to play uh, from the queen side. This is a very uh, interesting geometry of defense that this piece on, yeah. the, on the absolute other flank comes to defend h3. Yeah, so d7. now I see that, okay, the idea of rook h3 is gone forever. So I need to... some arrows. <laughs> no, but you missed a square. But yes. 
So what were you saying, Adiban? You missed bishop d7 in, during the game? No, no, no. Uh, I don't remember. Okay, I was just going with the flow, so I don't know what I saw and what I missed. <laughs> I was just so happy with my position, so I was just... You were so happy with your position because you were really enjoying playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay, I was like attacking against uh, such a great player, so I was very happy. <laughs> Sorry? Ah, yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, yeah. So that's actually I, a very good yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, this is the thing. So because queen g3? Yeah, there's no other defense, yeah, so this is the... And now, finally, uh, having all the stupid pieces will uh, actually make sense. So, materially, like, now, it's not so bad. Right. Maybe black is still probably okay, but uh, it's not what he wants. It's a good spot with the... Uh, yeah, queen of one. Well yeah, spotted yeah. with yeah, queen yeah. f1. Yeah, it was the only way actually to defend this. So rook e3 doesn't work. Yeah, then. rook e3 doesn't work. Uh, so basically like I have to continue the same plan, but just not giving any more pieces. Yes, Ashley. Knight g4. Okay. Interesting. A lot of pieces can <laughs> capture yeah, it. Uh, Bishop g4, what do you want that? Oh. Yeah, but it was nice. I think he wanted to overload the pieces, but... It even perhaps... Wait, actually, I'm curious what actually Knight happens. Knight g4, rook g2... Yeah, uh, yeah it's okay. complete. Okay, but probably everything is holding. No, but yeah, Bishop g4 is coming. But I think his point was take rook h3, right? Yeah, this is nice. So takes and uh, queen g3, again the same point. Right. Yeah, this theme actually is very nice. It happens many times, like, uh, oh, how do you call it? Exactly, I don't know. <laughs> the word. You mean? Blocking, maybe, I don't know, blocking is. Queen g3, maybe? Yeah, queen g3, yeah. Queen g3. Yes, so, and now, yeah, the thread is rook e3. And, uh, yeah, basically, I should not give him too much time uh, to develop his pieces. Yeah, because if I just wait one more move, he has knight a3 and uh, knight c2. Interesting. I, I'll also put this arrow. <laughs> oh. From the uh, other, the right side click. This one? Not this one. Uh, uh, this? Ah, okay. Great. <laughs> so if you wait one more move, he goes knight a3. Yeah, and knight c2, And yeah. then the e3 knight is protected, yeah. so then it becomes very difficult to continue yeah, yeah, yeah. the attack. I'm not at all sure if it's... Yeah, but still probably have some chances, but it's not clear. So yeah, queen g3, and now yeah, I'm going to take on e3. And it looks uh, uh, almost hopeless, but uh, he managed to fi uh, still find a defense. Actually, in such positions, tempos and every move really, really yeah, yeah, does counts, count. Yeah. You have to keep the momentum keep of going, the attack yeah, yeah. going. Yeah, there is, uh, I mean, giving up all the pieces will be for a waste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So any defense? What's your defense with white? Queen f1. Queen f1. Yeah, but uh, then you lose a lot of material after rook f1, knight f1, queen f2, perhaps, or rook. Uh, actually, queen let's f1. see. Queen f1. Yeah. Yeah, it's enough, I think, uh, because this f pawn will. Uh, no, actually, it's nice. You know, first give a check. Yeah. So that uh, you cannot run with the you king. You take everything with check. And then, no, just take. Oh, you just checkmate. Just, yeah, checkmate, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're not that cruel. <laughs> right, so queen f1 unfortunately does yeah. not work. What else? Yeah, it's almost very similar to what uh, he played. Queen f1, but yeah. So rook e3 is the big threat. So how would you defend it? No, actually here, now I remember, I actually thought the game was over, but he managed to find a defense, actually. Find a resource. Oh yes, Peter. And the producer of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. of the show. Peter. Queenie one. Well done, Peter. The only move to defend. Huh? Yeah, rook e3 and queen of two. Yes, this is what, and I thought it was over, but queen yeah, queen of one exactly. Oh, this yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, so this is what I missed. I thought rookie one, he has to take, and okay, I thought I'm just. And you win the c1 yeah, bishop. Yeah, 
but uh, unfortunately a skew in a font so and the difference is that after t you don't you're not able to win another piece yeah 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 is uh, like i can go queen d3 check and uh, queen c2 but knight a3 and is just can in time just yeah so queen d3 king f1 and knight a3 and knight just, a3 in just in time yeah so protecting everything very interesting yeah this also looks quite uh, nasty but somehow uh, there's no clear way to proceed and, and okay all the pieces are gone so i just have like a knight left so which will take another move to come into the game as yeah. well <laughs> all right so let's go back so, so queen e1 queen e1 was correct but rook e3 doesn't work yeah So now, okay, I'll give a clue. So okay, I think all my pieces are playing quite well except one piece. So I hope you don't mean the king. <laughs> <laughs> it's too early for that. <laughs> yeah, this is what I did actually because uh, the problem is uh, he's kind of stuck. Yeah, on the. I have to like say we've got some very impressive players in the audience. Well done, guys. Yeah, Knight of Swords was really cool, actually. Uh, so the point is, uh, the threat is Knight e5, and then, uh, yeah, you can probably take. Uh, ah, yeah, this is probably nice to show. Okay, let's say something like this. So I come Knight e5, uh, Knight c2. Okay, one option is I think Knight d3 is winning, but I. Yeah, knight d3 is probably the simplest, yeah. And just brutal. Rook e3 doesn't work because of king f, uh, queen f2 or what? Probably Ro queen yeah. f2, yeah? Queen f2. Ah, but knight f... Uh, king f1? Yeah, it's just barely surviving, yeah. Queen h... No, yeah. but I think it's yeah, too much. Yeah, just take on e3. Yeah, yeah, too much. We are forced to make a draw probably with this, yeah. Right. Yeah, so uh, I think, yeah, I wanted knight d3, I guess, here. Knight d3 and yeah, that looks really strong because the queen doesn't have... Yeah, queen doesn't have... The point is that queen can't go to d1 because now you just take on... No, actually, yeah. I think probably just knight f4. You can't take on g2 in that position? I think I also I can, but... Uh, knight g2, queen f2, king h2, knight f4. But rook h, uh, queen g1. Or knight e3 maybe, yeah. Queen g1, yeah. Knight. No, ah, because yeah, bishop on d7 yeah, is very seven, annoying. Yeah, very it's annoying. defending the h3 pawn. That's no, but queen d1, I'm pretty sure you can find a nice mate. Or maybe not. What about rook f1 here? Knight f1? Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, that's... No, okay, I think just knight f4 and uh, rook g2 is really unstoppable. Um... Right, because if knight e1, you just take rook e3. Yeah, just... <laughs> or even rook f1. Oh, no, no, you have to take rook e3. Yeah, rook e3 and finally it uh, crashes, yeah. Right. Yeah, so knight a3. Yeah, so he cannot do. So, okay, he wanted to prevent this knight e5 at any cost. Uh, so he, uh, he played d4. Yeah, but now there's a uh, major flaw with this plan. And now one of the lines which was not working before actually works. All right, so while the audience um, has a think. Yes. Seeing this game, I now understand why Vishy Anand said that you're such a risky team player and having <laughs> you on the team is just, uh, you oh. know, things can get really crazy and chaotic. So it's your style of play, yeah? This is very normal for you. Yeah, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I was like a very bad team player at first. I uh, think uh, because of me, uh, many times like uh, my team did not win a medal. <laughs> but now, yeah, the things have changed and uh, now because of me, my team is winning, so. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think has been the shift? Shift is uh, basically I stopped uh, losing in team events. <laughs> I think that is the main <laughs> reason actually. Uh, and okay, because in team events, uh, it's not just you. Like uh, if you, uh, actually one of the reasons why we got a bronze medal in uh, 2014 was uh, we were never losing any of the matches and at some point some guy would uh, somehow win and uh, so as long as you are not losing the match, okay, so there's always a chance that uh, you can win the match, like one of your teammates will win and you can eventually win the match, yeah. 
talking about not losing uh, team matches it wasn't the case on the night of the battle of the sexes huh ah yeah <laughs> that was very sad yes yeah i still have nightmares about that uh, <laughs> dc3 mo <laughs> which i played <laughs> <laughs> So that's uh, when the women team won against the men team. Yes, but I think it's like a tradition, right? They always beat us, if I remember. No, actually, um, last year it was the men team that won, and I think the year before that as well. Brian said women have won twice in history. And once and was I last night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what he said. Yeah, but I was I have been here three times, and I think. Uh, two times I was here, probably. Both, uh, maybe those were the two times yeah. <laughs> that the women team won. Then. <laughs> Stick to Olympiads, Ali. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, having a player like you on the team means that when there's a must-win situation for the team, they would yes. want to field a player like you because of your style of play. Yeah, yeah, sure. Actually, that's one of uh, my specialties. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> to play in must-win situations. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, this Olympiad actually, I was uh, playing too solid, and then we, uh, when I drew, like one of our teammates lost, and which eventually put us out of the contention. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna play solid anymore. I'm just going back to my old uh, how I used to play. So I think that was. Doesn't ah, yes. Doesn't 9G5 work now? Uh, Do we have a suggestion? 9G5. 9G5. Uh, what is the thread? Ideas, rookie three and methods three. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Bishop G four. Yeah, Bishop G four. It's uh, the only difference. Anyway, I think it's quite close, so I can just show them actually the rest. I mean, the idea is correct as you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. So now, yeah, just uh, after D four, I just went Rook and E three. Now this line works. Uh, so. So you just uh, continue the trend of giving more and more pieces. Yeah. So I just uh, gave Queen F two and Rook E one check, and uh, Queen F one, and now this uh, this is the difference. Yeah. So this was not possible previously, and now a new pawn oh, joins the. Very interesting. So when this pawn was on d2, d2, this was not working. Uh, yeah. The e3 move was not working, but yeah. after d4, and suddenly you have the threat of queen f2 now. Queen f2, now. F2, yeah. So. That's beautiful. Yeah. So after e3, it's uh, basically over. There's no defense. Oh, so he. Yeah, he played knight d2 and... Because uh, now if he takes on e1, you just take and you... I mean, besides the e pawn being very strong, you win everything on the queen side as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, exactly like the knight cannot move and uh, I queen the e pawn also. Yeah, so now I just went queen f2 and yeah, it was over. So I can go here, but I just uh, take on e2. There's too many queens. <laughs> 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 yeah, That's so after yeah, Queen of Two design. And this was probably yeah, my one of my favorite games from when I was even younger. <laughs> That's a very uh, very imaginative play from you actually in this game. It was uh, channeling your inner yes. tal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, well, we're gonna open the audience for questions very soon. But tell us a bit about. Um, your experience here so far, Diban, in Gibraltar? Yeah, Gibraltar, I always tell Stuart, like, okay, I'm very happy to be here, and uh, it's one of my favorite tournaments. And uh, also, it's one of those opens which uh, just uh, kept on getting stronger, actually. I remember in 2014, it was, uh, I think, not maybe so strong like uh, nowadays, but uh, then slowly, I think it got even bigger. And always, like, uh, it's one of the special places where Woman is maybe given more preference <laughs> <laughs> than men. <laughs> yes, it is an event which uh, strongly supports women chess. Yes. Um, you know, seeing this game, Adiban, like one gets a feeling that uh, you're a player who, with a very strong sense of imagination and a very romantic style of playing as well. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, where does that come from? Is it something? Did you study a lot of uh, a lot from books when you were growing up, or no? I think. Uh, our style is uh, more or less based on the first book which we read and like I said, mine was Attack with my uh, Mikhail Tall. So uh, I think that's why I always want to go for the attack, yeah. And my friend uh, Vidit, who has like a very solid style, his first book was uh, Capablanca Best Game. So <laughs> <laughs> you can see that that's so <laughs> the difference, yeah. <laughs> no, also the funny thing is, I, oh, my trainer, yeah, he was like, uh, I was, I'm very, 
like grateful for my first trainer, uh, C. Subramaniam. Uh, he made sure that I would study all the classics. And so he actually presented me with the same book, but I just could not go through it. It was so boring, <laughs> yeah. And uh, only after I became a grandmaster, I'm like, okay, you have to master this also, so you have to study. And then I, then I realized he was uh, really a great world champion. Yeah, <laughs> might be one of the strongest actually, because uh, he never used to make uh, much mistakes actually. Yeah. And, Capablanca, yeah, it was one of them. That's very interesting that uh, to say that the one of the first books that you yeah. read leaves a big impression on you. And if you had to give a big recommendation, something, I mean, besides uh, your first book, a yeah. book that you highly recommend for our audience that you feel left a big impact on you, besides. Yeah, like I said, this one? I think uh, this my memorable 60 games by Bobby Fischer. Uh, Bobby Fischer that's uh, very good. I think uh, every classical book is like uh, very good and. Uh, for end games, I would actually recommend uh, this book of uh, Drotsky, end game manual, and also now this uh, recent classic is uh, 100 end games you must know. That is also very good by Josh. Yeah, that's also I think very nice. Basically, like uh, books, I think still has the importance, which I feel nowadays many youngsters they are they think that uh, they can just. Uh, see you work with computer and uh, they can just uh, ignore the classics which is uh, not at all the right approach. Right, well we're going to open the floor to the audience. Any questions uh, from you guys or our online audience? I'll start. <laughs> but I want you to be a better audience in the first two master classes, all right? Be brave. He's here to answer questions. We pay him by the hour. No, I think I mean they are still uh, thinking about the position. I <laughs> gave them too many questions. <laughs> they were very brave with their moves suggestions. Yeah, have exactly. A question? Yeah, too many uh, questions. Yeah, so I'll go first and I'll get a question. Yeah. So Adiban, um, uh, this guy named Vichy Anand, he's pretty good at chess. <laughs> but tell us something you can absolutely crush Vichy at, any sport, game, or activity. What's something that he has no chance against you at? No, I think any sport other than chess. <laughs> I can crush him. <laughs> it could be a hard game. It could uh, be an eating no, competition. No, I, any sport other any than sport. Oh, okay, that's yeah, your answer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's my answer. But yeah. you, have a, you have an interesting story about uh, Vishy as well. I remember. He, could you tell okay, us? Okay, he is going to kill me for this, but okay, yeah, probably <laughs> I'll receive a message right now. Uh, okay, my place. <laughs> Once you come back to Chennai, let's meet. <laughs> you would probably say. Uh, so, yeah, what you was, There was this interesting story that you had about your how he was some you really looked up to and then from there playing in the same team with him and playing against him can you tell us about that yeah i think uh, okay the chess in india is so popular because of him and uh, like uh, everyone when we are younger we wanted to become like him he was our hero and uh, uh, f personally i'm very grateful for him because uh, like in spite of winning all this world championship he used to take the time to actually uh, interact with us and like when he used to win uh, like a national title, my first open national title, he, he would send me a message and uh, when he became an international master, he invited me for a dinner and uh, so I remember my first time I was just sitting next to him like uh, I just could not speak for the first 10 minutes. I was just uh, so stunned. Okay, I'm usually very talkative. And <laughs> <laughs> no, you <but> don't say. <laughs> <laughs> but the first 10 minutes I was just staring at him. I was not talking anything. I was just in awe. And uh, yeah, I just uh, like I think he just takes a personal interest and I'm very grateful for them. And uh, I think oh, he's one of the major reasons. Uh, me, myself and all these youngsters from India are uh, coming up here. Yeah. yeah, I think he's the big reason. He showed his six move loss at Beale 1988 on the air today. So he, 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 he lost in the six moves oh, against yeah, Alonso. Yeah, 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 yeah. So one. he's going to kill us yeah, first. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah, I know the reason why. Yeah, I know the story. Yeah, yeah we told it already on the air. So <laughs> we have a question from the audience. <laughs> Um, this is not my actual question, but I believe that Vishy is very good at tennis, so maybe he beats you there. Oh, tennis! <laughs> yes, actually, yeah, uh, tennis. So he can beat me. Because I, I, yeah. I think he's he's friend with Vijay Amitraj. So ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I know him. Uh, no, my question was that um, obviously you're very gifted at tactics, and uh, you were mentioning book, uh, game books. Yeah. But um, did you train with? Um, in-game studies, mate in two, or just a normal tactic books? No, That's no, a really I, interesting question. Yeah, I think, no, you need to like uh, solve all sorts of things. Like, yeah, may, I think uh, it's uh, very good to start with uh, mate in one, mate in two. Uh, some of my friends still have problem with that, so. <laughs> like, <laughs> Why are you looking at me? <laughs> no, not you. Like, uh, like I just wanted to mention uh, Vidit got uh, checkmated twice in a row. Uh, 
so in made in one <laughs> mist so it's still a problem with uh, many of my friends <laughs> so like uh, yeah i think uh, start with uh, made in one made in two and just uh, then three is also i think quite challenging and uh, studies are a bit i think little bit advanced so that maybe you might want to postpone until you are really ready for them because it's uh, really uh, like mind blowing and uh, I remember I have solved all sorts of tactics uh, around 4000 tactics or something I would have solved there was this uh, software ch CT art because at the time there was like no online platform like uh, chess.com or chess24 so where you can actually become a member and you can always solve uh, in this website but at the time there was no opportunity like that so I was uh, there was this software so I used to solve a lot I think that would uh, actually make you tactically very, uh, very alert, yeah. Uh, because also I remember Topolov uh, mentioned that calculation is everything. Uh, it's one of his favorite quotes, yeah. So I think, yeah, it's very important to uh, bring, like, uh, make your combinational vision very powerful. Now, Adiban, I know, uh, before yes. we go to the next question, I know that you really enjoy quotes and you, ah, have, yeah. <laughs> uh, you have a thing for quotes. Tell yes. us which, is the, which would be the one quote that you live by or L live by or something that has left a big impression on you uh, your favorite quote wait i just got a good quote today i'm trying to remember <laughs> yeah i believe uh, i have all i need so this i got today so i just thought i believe i have all i need yeah so okay, just well like the perfect package so, <laughs> <laughs> that's so when you got this i got today so it's like i'm always having some quotes <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's why i asked <laughs> right so we have another question um, i think it's quite important when improving to go through the uh, the games that you have played and try and understand yeah. them what what's your procedure for doing that yeah i think okay you have to probably uh, uh, okay, the thing is first, uh, I think it's very important to analyze the games you have lost and also the games you have won because uh, in that games you may also can learn. Uh, basically try to analyze without computer, I think uh, that's very important. Like uh, you have to analyze on your own, then uh, you can compare your notes with uh, computer. It's like an ongoing process, you cannot do it one day and forget about it. So you have to just do it continuously and eventually you will become very strong. And I read this book uh, by Axel Smith. Uh, what was the name again? Pump up, uh, pump up your uh, rating, yeah. So I think he. Uh, I think here. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very popular book, and all my friends uh, said it's very good. And uh, he recommends that he that was one of his training. Like Aryan Tari, he improved just by analyzing his games again and again. So I think yeah, that's uh, like a well-known, proven method, yeah. All right, do we have any other questions? Mike? Ari Ariban, at the Olympiad in Batumi, I felt very good because there's a couple Indian restaurants, and the one I walked into, the entire Indian national team was there, so I knew I had done well. But uh, my question is, have you ever played a tournament where there's just no Indian food anywhere to be found in that city? Yeah, no, I am not like your typical Indian. So, uh, like when I go outside India, I'm really not looking for Indian food, actually, because I want to explore their own cuisine. Like, I want to try different foods. In fact, I try to avoid uh, Indian food when I'm outside. So there have been many uh, times, probably it existed, but I would not know because I would be uh, like, I'm a big fan of like pizza and all this. So, so you're going go to go two weeks here with no Indian food? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. I can, <laughs> like, I can live my entire life without Indian food. It's not a big problem. <laughs> then I can go. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, you have a thing for Georgian cuisine. <laughs> yes, that's my favorite. And also Japanese I like, so. Talking about Georgian food, I know that you also had an experience of working, of training the Georgian women team for, a, yeah, for an event. Yes, left. Yeah, okay. My, it was because of my trainer, uh, Obilava. He suggested that, okay, uh, maybe it's, it would be interesting to train with the Georgian women team. And okay, I thought it would be fun and uh, quiet. And they actually <laughs> had a good performance. Yeah, yeah. And I just asked them which is their best performance so far. And they said... Uh, a long time back, they had one silver and before that maybe bronze. So I thought, okay, silver if uh, they and they I think got silver in this uh, European teams. So yeah, it was uh, overall nice experience and I had fun. <laughs> right. And someone said I was that I was a very lucky trainer. 
to work with all these beautiful ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions from the audience? Peter, anything from online? Probably not. Also, tell me, Adivan, what do you... How, we have so much young talent coming from India. We've got Pragnananda, we've got Nehal now, Gukesh. Gukesh, yeah. What, what, what is your opinion on their play? And uh, tell us a bit about your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think, uh, okay, somehow we have this culture, yeah, and there's always tournaments going on, like every weekend there's some tournament going on in uh, in Chennai, uh, especially, so... Chennai is where you're from. Yeah, yeah, so, and uh, that's why, like, there's no abundance of talent, and uh, somehow, yeah, I think uh, we are just well-versed for chess <laughs> from the beginning. And uh, right now, like, I think Gukesh is showing a lot of promise also, uh, I don't know, if I have to pick, I don't know, it's kind of hard, but I think all these youngsters really have like a huge promise, but uh, it's very important that uh, the next phase is going to be very difficult for them and uh, uh, they need to prove themselves and uh, I'm like, uh, in a way, if I can help somehow, it would be nice, yeah. like uh, Vishy was helping me. <laughs> 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 right. No, they're extremely talented, but I also feel that, um, I mean, talent is not rare but i think they also have this ability to work really hard and this passion for chess because i always see them they're playing a lot and yeah nihal for instance like uh, after finishing a to tiring tournament like the isle of man uh, he was playing online till five o'clock in the morning uh, some blitz so yeah these kids i think they are like uh, they are fully into chess and uh, even their hobby consists of chess so i think uh, yeah i think uh, it's all basically they are very r hard workers i think uh, at just such a young age and uh, and uh, I think they have like a good uh, support system and uh, it's very important that uh, your family is supporting you and uh, like when I was growing up like the, the, there was literally no pressure from my parents and uh, which is very important because nowadays many kings and uh, many kids now reach their potential because uh, they, they have too much pressure from their parents and uh, I mean if you are afraid when you are young then like okay then I don't think there's much uh, hope for you yeah when you get older all those things like become even worse so yes. when you are young you have to be like yeah, uh, ferocious and like you have to go for the kill always <laughs> 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 and all these kids are just like that so yeah they don't fear anyone yeah, over yeah, the board yeah, yeah. no matter who they are playing yeah against. i remember in reykjavik when i was playing like uh, everyone's concern was not to play against nihal and prag <laughs> they were happy to play with me or rapport or they were not scared of us but they didn't want to play with those kids <laughs> <laughs> This is the year that you won Reykjavik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the year. <laughs> yeah, and I have to thank you, of course, for uh, bullying for me to going there because I did not know what tournament to play. And uh, it actually marked my year uh, very well, actually. So. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> 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 okay, I have to ask you because this is something that I also as a player struggle with and I'm sure it probably resonates with a lot of, uh, uh, with a lot of us here. Uh, you know, when we've had a bad day or a bad game or a bad tournament, yes. it's really difficult to sort of get ourselves back up there the next time or the next tournament. What would be your practical advice? I mean, it's easy to say to keep any, a positive attitude and to keep smiling, but what would, what would you advise us to do uh, to be able to give our best for the remaining rounds of the next tournament? No, okay, like uh, personally for me, like I have this uh, one question I ask myself after I lose or when the, when the things are not going so well, I ask myself, is this going to stop me? And the answer is always no. So, okay, if this is not going to stop you, then there's no reason that you should be affected by it. And uh, I like that. Yeah, so and the main thing is, okay, just uh, you have to just keep removing everything. Like for example, okay, how would the people think? like uh, prestige like okay you lost the game okay like i mean it's like how the outside world thinks of you this is what people find it more difficult to cope with They're like oh well, everyone is thinking that i have lost they think i'm a bad player all this you don't need such things like you just have to play for yourself i think that's very important and uh, yeah i think uh, I think I also had this phase where uh, after a loss I would also lose the next game so it became two in a row <laughs> which is not one but yeah slowly I think uh, the major thing I just stopped caring about how the outside world would think and I stopped caring about the rating and uh, yeah just remove all these unnecessary elements and then uh, I think you'll be fine yeah just uh, 
just to be have hope for the future yeah that's very interesting because i think magnus carlson also said something uh, similar to that where he said that he doesn't really care about what people think about him or what their opinion is and uh, it's not important yeah 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 okay but he maybe takes it a little bit extreme but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he says that okay i will never listen to anyone okay so that's maybe a little bit extreme but uh, yeah the concept is kind of similar yes that's interesting all right anybody else with anything okay, okay. well thank you so much for your time adhiman yeah, that sure. was a very very entertaining game and a great conversation yeah, um thanks. learned a lot yeah and uh, wish you all the best for the remaining games yeah thank you thank you yeah, thanks thank you for joining us all right